Hammock camping is a super popular way to spend the night on the trail for many reasons. It's comfortable, it's very easy to set up on uneven ground, and it's pretty lightweight. That said, there are tons of hammock related products on the market today, and it can get really confusing. Well, I've done my research, and I've spent the cash. So what makes a hammock setup? Well, of course you need a hammock, and you need a way to hang that hammock on the trees. Once you get it up, you need a tarp overhead, and then you need a way to stay warm and you have different options on that. After about three to three and a half years with my prior hammock setup, I decided to take it to the next level. I decided to make it the ultimate. Sometimes you need the perfect piece of gear. Sometimes you need to make the perfect kit. And sometimes you just need the perfect cup of coffee. Gear can be confusing but it doesn't have to be. No BS, no agenda, no sponsors. Just what you need to know. Welcome to The Ultimate. My hammock itself is unchanged. It's the Warbonnet Blackbird XLC. Now I did upgrade the suspension in an effort to make it a little bit lighter. There are definitely lighter options from the standpoint of hammocks out there, but being lightweight isn't the only thing that makes something ultimate. I love the gear shelf that the Warbonnet Blackbird XLC has. I'll show you guys that here in a little bit when we stand it up. I use that shelf so much at night that I just can't imagine getting rid of it even to trim a little bit of weight. Now initially when I bought the hammock, it came with a cinch buckle system and it worked just fine. But I figured out over the years that that's a place that I could save some money. So I turned to DutchwareGear.com. I got five foot tree huggers made by something called Spiderweb 1.5. It has a 1,000 pound breaking strength and weighs only 1.5 ounces per foot. I still use my original titanium Dutch clips to attach the spider web to the trees. I also got 7 64 inch whoopee slings made out of Dyneema I got red for head and black for my feet. Changing suspension saved me about six ounces in weight and cost me 50 bucks. Now let me show you guys how easy it is to put up this hammock. So here is the hammock. I've got the red for head. This slope looks like the head is a little bit below the feet, but it's not. It's just kind of an optical illusion of this, uh, this terrain. This model has very nice bug netting. You want to be able to, whenever you get in your hammock, you want to be able to grab the ridge line and twist it just a little bit like that, even with weight on, and I am able to do that. Not quite as much as I would like, but pretty close. Let me show you guys the backside where that little gear loft is. So if you're in your hammock like this, this area right here is the gear loft. I've got extra stuff here. Just slide it down. This usually will hold my phone, a jacket, a little bit of extra clothes whenever it's uh, colder at night than I want. Obviously it starts the night warmer and then it gets colder as the night goes. So I'll put a couple pieces of gear here or clothes that I can put on through the night as it gets colder. Also holds my phone and usually I'll have a little USB charger. I'll put the phone to charge at night while I'm sleeping. This little gear loft is the reason that I love this hammock and I probably won't be changing it anytime soon. I will try quickly to show you how these whoopee slings work. Uh, it's kind of like a pressic knot to some extent. It's a, it's a jam knot. So there is a piece of Dyneema that comes through here and then a hole through the middle of it and a piece of Dyneema that goes through it. If you pinch the bottom and you pull, it'll slide through as you can see. If you try to pull from the top, it won't. It, it latches on, like it is on there. But if you 
pinch on top like this, pull through, you can tighten it back up just like that. Very nice way, simple way to adjust your ridge line. I have these little Dutch clips right here. They're titanium, super small. Probably can't see them, maybe you can. And they attach directly to the continuous ridge line right there. Once again, I'll emphasize to you guys, I'm not detailing how to hang a hammock. I could do a video on that if you want. I would suggest checking out Spagiver backpacking. I'll talk about him at the end of the video. But this is just quick and dirty to put it up to show you guys this hammock. Now my original tarp in my setup was the Mama Jamba from Warbonnet Outdoors as well. It's a basic hex tarp and it worked extremely well. It didn't have doors though and that's something I wanted to change. With the guy lines, stakes, and a little bit of Dutchware bling thrown in, it comes in at 17 ounces. After a few colder nights on trail, I decided that maybe a tarp with doors would help, but that would of course bring extra weight. But the thing is, I wanted less weight. So, I had to get out the wallet again. A sill nylon tarp with doors would have added 10 ounces, but the tarp that I chose actually subtracted seven ounces, and it has doors. So that's essentially a pound of savings just on my tarp. I'll also point out that my old tarp had an 11 foot ridge line and this new tarp has a 12 foot ridge line. Let's put this beauty up and then we'll check it out. There you go. This is the Dyneema Hex Tarp with doors from Hammock Gear. On its own, it weighs an amazing 7.8 ounces. That includes its own little stuff sack. I added the snake skin, and then you get all the Dyneema tie outs, the Dutchware gear and all that stuff. 10 ounces for the total package. So for seven ounces less than my Mama Jamba Tarp, I get a foot more of length and doors, which helps a lot in colder weather. Only problem is, it's a $350 tarp. Let me show you how the doors work and a little bit of detail on the Dutchware bling that I use to attach it to the trees as well as to stake it down on the ground. We'll start with these doors and they're closed right now. And what I've got is just a piece of elastic and two mitten hooks that I bought from Dutch and I just clipped off the little locking part. Take this off, do it on both sides and we'll close the doors. To close your doors, you're just gonna string these mitten hooks across Right here, and right here. And it closes your doors perfectly. You can do that, keeps all the wind uh, out of here, and really works tremendously well. So quick look at how these work. So you loop it through that little hook, and then you can tighten it just like that. Once you do that, you've got these two antennas you want to pass it behind the small antenna. You want behind the small antenna and then through the big one. And that locks it in place right there. That's not going anywhere. If you want, which I usually will do, just put a little, little loop right here. Quick release loop just to be sure. Like that. And then in the morning when I'm done, just pull that out. Undo it. And it pops right off. Just a quick look at what Dutch calls his stinger. This is very similar to the flies that you'll see, but the cool thing is it's got this little carabiner. So I just clip it straight on to the uh, end of my tarp. And then to use it, you'll just bring this. You can see this little loop right here. You just wanna catch it through that loop. That gives you a little advantage there. Then once you get it tight, you bring it through the small antenna like that. That kind of locks it. And then you jam it through the large antenna and it's not going anywhere. I went ahead and put my tarp back in the snake skin so you guys can see these quilts a lot better. Let's get them out. In case you're wondering, both quilts do fit inside of this stuff sack, so it's pretty compact.
One thing I'll show you guys that I did pick up from Dutchware as well is just a very simple little clip. This attaches to your under quilt's suspension and then it attaches right here to the whoopee sling. One simple snap and you've got this under quilt on both sides. Two other nice features that allow for a lot of adjustability. You can adjust the length of basically the ridge line of your tarp easily by just tightening it up or loosening this back. You can adjust the side to side depending on which way you're lying. You also can adjust this so you can release this and it opens this up nicely, this baffle, so it allows a little bit of air in if you're hot or you can cinch it way down so it gets right up next to your feet if it's cold. Top quilt is your standard top quilt. Um, you can get the bottom. It also has a cinch at the bottom, okay? And then this one has snaps. You can get zipper or snaps, but you can snap your foot box together, which gives you more uh, warmth down by your feet. Let me just snap this and I'll show you guys. And it's just snapped together. Basically, otherwise, it's just a really nice top quilt. So that's pretty much my setup. And I've tinkered with it for years and I'm really happy with it. With this particular setup, I've spent maybe four or five nights out on trail. They've been much more comfortable and much lighter weight than my prior setup. This is a very confusing topic. If you have any questions, make sure you leave a comment down below. I also encourage you to check out my buddy over at Spagiver Backpacking. He has got an awesome channel. He covers a lot of topics, but he's very much an expert in hammock camping. So check him out. I'll leave a link down below. This gear is high quality. It's not cheap. It's high quality. It's all made here in the United States. Warbonnet Outdoors is out of Colorado. Hammock gear is based out of Ohio and Dutchware gear is based out of Pennsylvania. It's not cheap, but it will last you. Like I said above, this is part of my ultimate series. In fact, this is the first video in my ultimate series. The point of this series is to try to help you navigate the confusion of all the gear that's out there. If you're wanting to put together a kit, if you're wanting to buy a specific piece of gear, and you're looking for very specific recommendations, that's what this ultimate series is all about. I try to take everything into account, not just cost and weight, but what I think is the best piece of gear you can buy. And I explain the reasons why I made my choices. Hopefully it helps you navigate the confusion and find just the right answers and gear that you're looking for. Make sure you check down below as the Ultimate Series continues. I'll put videos into a specific playlist and you'll be able to watch all the Ultimate Series. It's gonna have a lot of videos, guys. I have 15 or 20 already planned, so stay tuned for those. Now do me a favor, if you like the video, if you're looking forward to more Ultimate videos, hit the thumbs up down below. Really helps spread things across YouTube. Tremendously helpful to my channel. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscription button, and if you want to be notified whenever I release a new video, hit that notification bell and you'll be the first to know. Hope you guys enjoyed a look at this pretty amazing hammock camping system. No doubt in my mind that it's the ultimate. If you disagree, comment down below. As always guys, I appreciate you checking out the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Stay tuned for more videos soon.